4, your election coverage station in Washington. Live coverage from campaign headquarters. News election service computer tabulations. Two important reasons to stay with 4 on election night. I don't know how to put this to you, Emily. I feel rather foolish making such a confession. Well, now, Carter, you're a, a little old to be bashful, aren't you? What is it you're trying to tell me? Well, I hope you won't laugh at me, Emily, but... I think I've fallen in love with Andrea. Carter, do you know what you're saying? Yes, I'm saying something I've never said before. Not even saying it to the girl, I'm saying it to her mother. But when did you become aware of this? Well, I've always been fond of Andrea, you know that. I just never realized the extent of it, I guess. It's not easy to know when fondness ends and love begins. Carter, I'm sure you're sincere. I have no doubt of that. But are you sure this isn't the result of what you've just found out about Andrea? About her illness, I mean. Couldn't this be some kind of overreaction? Yes, I'm sure it has a great deal to do with that. Because what I felt when I first heard the news, a terrible sense of loss, made me realize oh, I really need your daughter. I, uh, I don't quite know what to say. I guess that's why I didn't put up any kind of a resistance when you first suggested that I, that I date Andrea. It's ironic, really. Something that you wanted me to do, I was already thinking about. You're not very good at displaying emotion. I suppose you know that. Does that mean I don't have them? No, of course not. Well, then maybe you can guess the kind of emotion that I'm feeling right now. Realizing that the girl that I love is going to die. This is Somerset. Brought to you by Prell Concentrate. The shampoo that gives you great lather for great looking hair. Susan! What? Susan, I just went over the bills. We've got to tighten our belts. I'm trying, Stanley. Well, well, try harder. Uh, do you have to use so much shampoo? Prell Concentrate. Just this much made all this great lather. Oh. Honey, our budget's a disaster. But your hair looks like a million bucks. Prell Concentrate. Great lather for great looking hair. How good is your wife's fried chicken? Very good. Brown and crisp like chicken should be. How's it for greasy taste? No greasy taste. You really like your wife's fried chicken. Let's call and ask what shortening she fries with. What kind of shortening do you use? Crisco. Digestible all-vegetable Crisco. Fries crisp and doesn't add greasy taste. I was just telling the lady here just how I like your fried chicken, you know. Somehow Crisco cooks sure have proud husbands. Carter. I'm not trying to minimize what you feel. I'm only surprised to hear that you feel it. That I can become emotionally involved? I know I'm thought of as being a cold-blooded sort. But miracles can happen. Well, you must admit that you've managed to mask your feelings about Andrea rather well. Perhaps we use masks to cover up our real faces. Yes, I'm sure that's so. Maybe I should have kept my mask on with you. I'm glad you didn't. But if it's true, if you're really falling in love with Andrea, then I can only tell you that you must do something to stop feeling that way. I didn't deliberately fall in love with her. If I had the choice, I never would have made it. It isn't my idea of the happiest of states. Nevertheless, you can't allow yourself to fall in love with the Carter. 
It can only hurt you. Emily, I understand perfectly well that eventually I'm going to have to lose her. What I don't want to do is to have to lose her to someone like David Grant in the meantime. I'm afraid I have no control over that situation. Oh, come on, Emily, this is no time for modesty. You have control over practically every situation in this house. I know that you've been against the boy from the very beginning. But this is not the beginning anymore, Carter. It's the end. And you're only letting them see one another because you want her to be happy in the time that she has left. But you must realize that she's in love with him. I'm only allowing her to do what she would do anyway, even if I were to forbid it. She doesn't know what love is. How could she possibly know that? She has no basis for comparison. You astonish me. Now, what's, what's David Grant mean, really, to her? Now, he's just a, a casual flirtation, nothing more. There's nothing to recommend him. Possibly because he's the same age. No justification for love, Emily. Carter, I can't tell you what makes people respond emotionally to other people. They do. And in this case, she has. Because she's been lonely and sheltered. Because her previous boyfriends have been too carefully um, screened. Rigidly... Um, rigidly programmed. Now, the minute she gets a chance to pick her own boyfriend, she's bound to go overboard. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps not. But I don't think an admission that I've been too strict is going to change the basic situation or help you with your problem. What I want, first of all, is that you understand my point of view. That's all. And if I can, if I can show that to you, you could help me. You really could, you know. In what way? By not standing between Andrea and me. But I wouldn't stand between Andrea and anything she wants. I only want her to be happy, Carl. Well, at least, at least give me the chance with her. That's all I want. Because she means more to me than I can tell you. She means more to me than anyone I've ever known. Good night, Dana. Good night, Dana. Were you mad at me? No, of course not. Like, are you mad at me for not hanging around while you and David played back oh, No, I said I wasn't mad at you. Now, that means that I'm not mad at you about anything. Because I didn't mean to be rude. Please, it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, I mean, David didn't get to play anyway. I had to teach him the rules first. Because I'm not a good deed by not, by just ducking out. Oh? What kinds? Well, I thought you two could use all the time alone you could get. Thank you. Thank you, and I am glad that you feel that way. And I hope it is contagious. I wish uh, a lot more people around here would catch something like that. Well, if they did, they have to have heart, which is something they seem to lack these days around here. I'm not so sure about these days. I don't know whether you've noticed it or not, but uh, everyone seems to be on some kind of let's be nice to Andrea kick. Do you know, I am not running into any opposition from anyone about anything. Now, I'm, I've tried. I've tried to figure it out, but I just can't. I guess maybe you're right. The millennium is here at last. Yeah, but why, why shouldn't they let you just... Do as you please. I mean, why shouldn't you be as happy as you want to be, right? I, I should be, Dana. You're absolutely right. And I am. So, uh, do you think maybe you could look a little more relaxed about it? We'll return to our story in just a moment. Bag, laundry bag. What you doing, Mrs. Agner? My mom's filling the fish bag, right? Right. 
It takes biz to get out your grime. That's because I'm tough. This oh. doesn't oh. need biz, but this. Grape juice. Biz bag. Huh? Biz bag. Biz makes a tough wash washable. Oh, even Biz can't soak out some stains. They're listed on the box. But the Biz bag is just the place for many things detergent alone can't wash clean. Gimme! Biz bag! Lucky win. For the finals, we better shape up. I'll start with the shower. Jean, we're out of soap. She's still out of soap. I found something that makes you feel cleaner than soap. Deodorant zest. This soap really lathers. Not soap, zest. What's more, soap leaves a sticky soap film. Zest doesn't. Even after rinsing, soap film's still there. That zest, I feel like a winner. Feel cleaner than soap. Deodorant zest has never contained hexachlorophene. Uh, I'm sorry I got all solemn about it, little one. It's just that I... You're really important to me, you know, and, and I just want to see you happy. I know that. And I want you to be happy, too. So, uh, why don't we just decide to be happy? <laughs> okay. May I sit down? Of course you may, if you don't mind my continuing to get ready for bed. You can continue to do anything you please. <laughs> well, how did things go? I mean, I know I wasn't there to sort of keep them humming along, but did you and David play nicely together? Oh, well, we really didn't get much of a chance to do much else but struggle with the first principles of back end. Mm. Nothing, nothing newsworthy for the Daily Diary, huh? Well, it was for me. I mean, it was really, it was just one of the most lovely evenings I've spent in a long time. One I think I'll always remember. Yeah? But that gammon sure has improved since I last played it. What, what'd you do, invent some new rules? Well, come on, tease me. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what did happen? I didn't remember anything out of the ordinary. Well, now, you see, there probably wasn't anything for you, but for me. Oh, Tina, I mean, don't you realize what's happened? I mean, don't you realize how important this is? No. Tell me. This was the first time that David came to visit me that we just stayed home. I mean, that, that he was finally accepted into this house by my family. I, I don't remember anyone making a great effort to entertain him. Well, no, but they didn't have to. The point is that they accepted his being here with me. Oh, don't you know how important this is to me after all that's happened? What do you mean? You mean mother accepted him? That's what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose I mean that most of all. Well, she she has come along pretty nicely, the old battle axe. Right? Tina! I mean, but there is hope for the older generation yet. Right? <laughs> I just I just know that it is wonderful. And it was just one of the most beautiful evenings of my life. Well, that's what you should have, little boy. One beautiful evening after another. All this happiness, it uh, frightens me a little. It's like, it's like everything that I've always wanted just suddenly materializing, just like magic. It's probably being done with mirrors. It's going to all vanish in just a second. No, no, don't, don't think about it. Just enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> oh, it's probably because subconsciously, you see, I don't, I don't think I, I deserve it. The little subconscious stuff make cowards of us all. Right. Uh, all right, I'd better, I'd better get downstairs and let you get your beauty sleep. Oh, I think maybe you had. Hey, before I go, uh, did you take your medicine? No, I didn't. I just really don't think I could face it this evening. In other words, you didn't take it tonight. In other words, I, I didn't take it. But uh, please don't let me keep you from uh, leaving. I just despair of you. <laughs> you. <laughs> Likewise, I am sure. And now, good night. Oh, so, uh, David has found himself a really rich girlfriend, huh? Yeah. But it was by accident, not by design. Oh. Well, listen, I'm not casting any aspersions, no far be it for me. I mean, after all, I married a Delaney myself, remember? <laughs> well, Andrea's a nice kid. Yeah, well, I'm glad. Uh, truly, I'm very, uh, very happy for David. You know, actually, I've heard about this little girl before. It seems to me there was a story about her when she was only 16 years old. Yeah? Yeah, there was a story in the Somerset paper. 
fact that Miss Andre Moore was going to be one of the most wealthy heiresses in the country. One of the most wealthy? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, actually, I suppose it's, uh, it's only relative. I mean, I don't know how much richer you can be when you have uh, 50 million dollars rather than just five. You can only live in one room at a time. <laughs> Of course, if you're that rich, that room can be in a castle. Yeah. Uh, how often have you, uh, have you seen her? A couple times. Double dated a few times. No, Andrea's only problem is it. Yeah, what's Andrea's only problem? Well, she seems to be wealthy and everything but her health. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Something's the matter, huh? With me? Oh, no, no, no. I, I might be a little bit jumpy, Tony, because uh, there are some problems around the office that really have me worried. Well, is there something I can talk to you about? Mm -hmm. No, no, thanks for the offer, but Sam Lucas is coming over in a few minutes to talk about it with me. You're having a business meeting at this time of night here? That sounds pretty serious. Oh, no, it's just, uh, just that it's uh, more convenient that way, that's all. Well, listen, maybe I could, uh, you know, sort of stick around and, and listen in and throw in my two cents worth. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Tony, but, uh, no, I, I don't think so. Oh, come on, I'm, a member of the firm now? But Tony, I said no. This happens to be none of your business. Now, don't try to get into the game until you're called in, will you? We'll return to our story in just a moment. Here are two packaged spaghetti dinners. The ingredients in this package are tomatoes and onions and pepper and salt and oregano and meat and garlic and bay leaves and pasta and cheese, which are also the ingredients in this package. One package could take you hours to cook. Chef Boyardee takes you only 12 minutes to cook, and everything you need is in it. Why not put our package in your package? We do the shopping, you do the cooking. When you live on your toes, how do you live with corns? Ugly corns hurt. I don't cover up this problem with bulky pads or plaster. I use Free Zone. Liquid medicated Free Zone frees you from a corn problem. Free Zone eases pain fast, penetrates deep. So in just days, its medicated action helps dissolve away the entire corn. Don't live with a corn. Try liquid medicated Free Zone. Free Zone frees you from a corn problem. And now, after this message, we return to Somerset. If I could always be with my family, I'd watch what they eat. But see what happens when I'm not there. They fill up on snacks and don't have room for my wholesome meals. So we have vitamin insurance, one-a-day vitamins. That way, at least we get important vitamins we may need every day. Mommy, Mommy, the movie was really great. And Daddy bought us lots of popcorn. And soda and pretzels and potato chips. One-a-day brand multiple vitamins and chewable chocks for kids. The world's most trusted vitamins. Now you can get natural garlic flavor in a bottle. Creamy garlic dressing from Kraft. A dressing that's thick, smooth and richly creamy. Pungent with natural garlic flavor and lemon juice. Creamy garlic dressing with natural garlic flavor from Kraft, of course. I get the distinct feeling that I said something wrong. No, Tony, uh, there was nothing. I... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to snap your head off that way. Dad, I wish you'd just level with me and tell me what the matter is. What makes you so sure that there's something the matter? Because oh, you've never been this touchy before. Listen, I'm not trying to stick my nose in somebody else's business. I think I might be able to help. You know, you sound a little like the doctor who's uh, sorry to hear that the patient isn't really deathly ill. Okay. 
I'll get out of your way. No, well, wait a minute, Tony. Look, uh, don't go. Well, no, maybe it might be a good idea for you to stick around and find out what's really happening at Delaney Brands. Or maybe you'd just rather tell me now. No, you'll hear about it soon enough. When Sam gets here, there's no point in going over the same ground twice. Okay, whatever you say. You sure you want me to stay? Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I guess I just haven't got used to the idea of your being part of Delaney Brands, too. After all, now you have a stake in the company welfare as much as any of the rest of us. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. I mean, you don't have to tell me any top-level secrets. But I think the more I know about the Lady Brands, the better I'll understand how things are done. That's right. You're absolutely correct about that. You don't think that uh, Sam Lucas is going to mind my sitting here? Oh, no, no, of course not. <sighs> that must be Sam. Uh... Oh, come on in, Sam. Look, I know it's late, Rex, but I couldn't let it go until tomorrow. Oh, hello, Tony. How are you? Fine, thanks. Uh, look, uh, Sam, I asked Tony to sit in on this. This involves his department, too. Oh, fine. Huh. Uh, sit down, Sam. Yes, sit down. Actually, I'm glad you're here with us, Tony. You're going to have to learn how we top executives operate sooner or later, so you'll know what not to do when it's your turn. Well, I appreciate you letting me, letting me sit in on this. Well, Tony, you realize that anything we say here is uh, strictly confidential. Oh, sure, I understand that. All right, good. Now, come on, Rex. Now, just what is this all about? Just what I told you over the phone, Sam. Leo let a passing remark drop to me, something that he explained more fully later on, to the effect that they were going to have to let, uh, oh, a half a dozen or so employees of the plant go. They meaning who? I don't know. Well, but why? I mean, what, what did he say was the reason behind this? Too much uh, dissension, he said. Oh, now what is that supposed to mean? I think there's a lot of opposition to Virgil Paris in the plant. I think he, he was he who instigated this whole movement, if that's what it is. Look, we all have people who don't like us. You do, so do I. We have people we don't like. Doesn't mean we start arranging mass purges just because of it. No, but then uh, we're not Virgil Paris. Excuse me, but I think that Virgil's out to get rid of everybody he thinks is a possible threat to him. Which could mean there won't be many people working in the plant after that because he's stirring up quite a bit of resentment down there. Yeah, well, there are quite a few of us who share that feeling. You know, I always felt he did a pretty good job as a plant manager. But I never really liked that guy. Oh, I know that, Rex. Look, Sam, this is something that I really don't want to see happen, but well, I don't feel I can take issue with Leo myself. But you can. <laughs> oh, yes, I can. Look, Sam, I'd like you to find out if it's really true. Or if Leo was just trying to sound me out about it. I intend to, Rex. It's on my first order of business. And if it is true, I'd like you to try to do something about it, Sam. I mean, I can't have all these wholesale firings at the plant. It's going to destroy everybody's morale. Everybody's going to feel that he hasn't got a job anymore, that it's shaky. Besides, I can see there are going to be a lot of union problems because of this. Yeah, I see where it will, too. So you will make it your business to do something about this, Sam. Don't you worry, Rex. I will take care of it. We'll return to our story in just a moment. Simple pleasures are the best. All the little things that make you smile and glow All the things you know Like Van Camp's Pork and Beans America's best seller Because you know a good thing when you taste it And Van Camp's tastes better to more people Life's simple pleasures are the best Van Camp's Pork and Beans A great simple pleasure My dog eats something like apple, just cost less. It's got cereal in it, read the label. Huh? It's got cereal in it, read the label. Meat byproducts, soybean meal, cracked barley. Hmm. Now look at Alpo. Huh? Now look at Alpo. Beef, meat byproducts, vitamins, minerals, no cereal. Right. Hey, you're Alpo. Thanks. Doesn't your dog deserve Alpo?
is it? Oh, what place? What happened? Oh, Is the nightmare? Oh, he was here. Who was here? Who are you talking about? Jingles. Oh, Jingles, isn't he? Isn't he? Isn't he here now? Oh, there's no one here. But he was here. See, I thought it was that dream again, and it frightened me, Carter, and I screamed. Oh, and of course you did, and I don't blame you. No, no, I shouldn't have. Don't you see? I had no right to scream in like that. Jingles, I'm sorry. Please come back. Andrea, please, take hold of yourself. There's nothing wrong. You must understand that. Everything's all right. He was here. I know he was here just now in this room. Carter, you must have seen him. I came into the room, and there was no one here. No one at all. Now, you're upsetting yourself unnecessarily. Look, can I get you something to help you sleep better? Let, let me show you something. Here. See? There's no one here. No one at all. Just you and me. I'm so sorry that I screamed. Don't you understand, Carter? You'll probably never come back, never. Not after the way I've treated him. Carter... Oh. Andrea. Dear Andrea. My Paul has a good job with a good company. And he works hard, too. But you know how long he had to work to pay for this crib? More than a whole day. Nearly two days for the carriage. Almost four hours for this bassinet. And the baby's not even born yet. So I work hard to make Paul's paycheck stretch. And believe me, I watch the pennies just as closely as the dollars. That's why I buy products like Does. Sure, it costs a few pennies more. But now look what I get. One of these pretty smoke-colored glasses. Aren't they nice? And I get a good basic detergent that has one of the oldest and finest names in America. It'll make Paul's dirty work shirts come out looking as clean as this. Paul thinks I'm being pretty smart when I buy products like Does. So do I. Does. With Swedish design smoked glassware. A smart way to shop. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Somerset. And earlier on most of these stations, be sure to watch the continuing story of another world. We're already here in NBC News Election Central. The computers are plugged in and all of us soon will be. In a few hours, results and projections will come from these boards and we invite you to stay with us. Coverage begins with NBC Nightly News. Dorothy Lamour and Bobby Vinton join Mike next on 4.